Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast this week in America. Thank you for sharing some time with us today. Carl Berryman's book, 2025, recently received critical acclaim from the U.S. Review of Books for its intelligent details about weaponry, politics, history, genetically modified foods, even geology. It's a story of survival. A surprise attack launched from the International Space Station will result in 95% of the urban and suburban U.S. population dying within two weeks due to starvation, violence, and the effects of radiation. There will be no time for a retaliatory strike as the strategic assets have all been destroyed. Our cities will become jungles, ruled for a short time by gangs that carve out their territory. An EMP attack will immediately magnetize all internal combustion engines, airplanes falling from the sky, all unprotected vehicles immediately crashing due to loss of control. Survivors will wait in vain for a return to normalcy. The author is Carl Berryman, a retired U.S. Army officer having served as lieutenant colonel. He served 13 tours in over 22 years, including a short stint during the Vietnam War, where prior to joining the Army, he practiced veterinary medicine in Montana. After his military career, he took a master's degree in public health from the University of Minnesota, a former diplomat in the American College of Veterinary Preventive Medicine, where he was responsible for the Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Weapons Unit in Korea. Staff Officer of Medical Research and Development Command at Fort Detrick in Maryland, Carl Berryman, the author of 2025, is our guest on This Week in America. Carl, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. This is a fascinating book. So many aspects we'll be talking about during the course of the program. The first question is, why did you write this book? What was it that interested you in this topic that that caused you to write this book, 2025? I like to look to the future, 5, 10, 20 years down the road to see what the possibilities are. Uh, And they scare me a bit. Yeah, it sounds like it in the book because what you're you're painting is sort of a bleak picture. Talk about that because I know you've said that you you believe that World War III is inevitable. Talk about why you feel that way. Well, there are a number of factors that come into that. Uh, one, I think our economy is going to tank sooner or later because of the massive debt. I see resurgence in both Russian and Chinese military where they are at least our peers, if not our superiors. And I think that is a trend that will probably continue. We spend our money on social welfare programs instead of defending the country. With us on the program is Carl Berryman. His book is 2025. You'll find it, of course, at Amazon, the usual places. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to Carl's book, Talk about that. You described it as sort of a three-ring circus now between the U.S., Russia, and China. Talk about these three nations and how you see possibly these three or at least several of them aligning. I kind of missed that, dear. Yeah, the wait, alignment of... Go ahead. Yeah, Barbara's wife is, is with him on the phone, and, and what I was asking about was the alignment of these three countries, the U.S., Russia, and China. How do you see that playing out? Well, I see that they both have engaged us in a strategic race for superiority. Uh, I think China's yes, dear. I think China's economy is trying to uh, catch up with us. They're the second largest economy in the world, and I think they will soon pass us. Yeah, it's interesting. We've got uh, these two totalitarian regimes against the capitalistic, uh, relatively free society of the U.S. It's an interesting world that you paint in, in 2025. Why, why the title 2025? What does that year represent? It, it sounds so far away, yet you think of the calendar. It's not really that far away. How did you choose 2025? I actually wrote this book five years ago. I try to look down the road, uh, as I said earlier, 5, 10, 20 years. And uh, hold on, my wife is. Get your hand away from the phone. Oh, okay. 
Uh, sorry about that. Oh, no problem. Uh, I see continued deterioration of our military. President Trump has not been able, in my opinion, uh, to turn the military around when we suffered tremendous, how should I say, a tremendous, tremendous loss or uh, cutbacks under the Obama administration. And you talk about, yeah, all that's going on, all the different wars, and it's interesting, you talk about tariff wars, trade wars, and shooting wars, and you really see sort of what an escalation among those. They seem to tend to follow each other historically. Uh, we are currently in a trade war right now, and trade wars do take when the situation gets severe enough to become shooting wars. Carl Berryman is our guest on This Week in America. We're talking about his book, Critically Acclaimed, 2025. On top of that, we've got this high-tech environment out there, probably more advanced than when you wrote the book five years ago. Talk about that and the dangers of the, the high-tech that we've got out there that could, could lead to an actual shooting war of some kind. Yes, the technology is advancing very, very rapidly. You are probably aware that there's even a news release this week that Russia has just launched a new supersonic missile uh, that can reach the United States in 30 minutes or less. Now, previously, if we had war with, uh, I'm sorry, I said Russia, and I should have said China, Russia could shoot over the North Pole, and a missile launched from any place in Russia would reach the United States in about 34 minutes. China, on the other hand, being smaller down on the scale, uh, would have uh, um, have to have a missile shooting. Thank you, dear. Would have to have a missile uh, coming for a longer distance, and they apparently have just achieved that, or at least that's what they have claimed. Just adding more to uh, suspense and uh, and trepidation to what lies ahead here between the three world superpowers: uh, Russia, China, and, and the U.S. This story unfolds in Carl's book, 2025, books available at Amazon, the usual places where books are sold. I mentioned in the beginning the, the EMPs, the electromagnetic pulse. Talk about that. This is real, and this is, this is something that concerns a lot of people. I, explain what that is. Okay, uh, nuclear blasts have three primary effects, heat, blast and radiation. The radiation can be uh, broken down into ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Uh, we're talking here with an electromagnetic pulse of the non-ionizing radiation. It has the capability to destroy every piece of digital equipment, period. Uh, engines will be magnetized. They will immediately stop running. Airplanes will fall from the skies. Traffic jams will be inedible. Uh, so much of the electronic circuitry in the United States will be burned out. Generators, electrical generators that supply our power, of which there are about 340 in this country, will cease to exist. There will be no power in the United States. And that's frightening. As I was reading the story from your book, 2025, most people in the beginning would go, oh, that's sort of science fiction. That couldn't really happen. But when you stop and think about it, how reliant we are on all of our technology, all of our computers, it very well could happen. And, and you point that out in the book. And talk about the research you did on this uh, for the EMP. And it was, it was frightening to you as well, wasn't it? Quite a bit. Uh, there, I'm afraid our politicians do not either recognize or are afraid to really discuss this. But it's been a physical fact. We recognized it way back when, when the first nuclear blast went off. But now a bomb, a nuclear bomb, can be tailored to one of the three primary effects, heat blast or radiation. And in my book, the United States is covered by four bombs lost launched from the space station that will completely blanket the United States with a massive electromagnetic pulse. Every piece of digital equipment, electronics, everything will be burned out. Are we past the point of no return here, or should we... Th 
I guess, get the red flag out now and go, wait, let's stop politicians. Let's figure this out before before we can't turn around. Or or have we gone too far with all of this technology and not responded appropriately? It would be difficult to turn around, but it can be done if we put our efforts into it. I recently read an article that there were over 700 welfare programs in which we were pouring money. Welfare programs have exceeded the cost of our defense. This is something we need to change and put more money in our defense. While pro, pro extremely expensive, I think if we wish to survive as a country, it must be done. The book is 2025. Uh, the author, Carl Berryman, is our guest on the program. The book is available, of course, at Amazon. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to information on Carl's book. He has several other books that we'll mention at the end of the program as well, worthy of reading. Will this lead to mass destruction? How do you see this as possibly playing out? I'm looking at this and reading this, and I'm wondering if anybody could win a war that's, that's based on these factors. Could anyone win a war based on these factors? There will be no real winner. As a matter of fact, if you read the book, uh, since Russia and China gang up on us, we are or have been the world's policemen. And this elimination of the United States opened the doors for them for many other opportunities for military exploration, should I say. They would threaten, be able to threaten Western Europe, uh, Russia could, in my book, Russia gets Western Europe, China gets Africa, and Asia. It's a, it's a frightening scenario, and it all plays out in Carl's book, 2025, critically acclaimed, and you will find out why as you're reading it. It's a book that will entertain you. You will go from page to page, can't wait to get there. And then it will start to sink in that, wait a minute, unless we make some changes, this very well could be a scenario that plays out in, in the world as we, as we know it today. Uh, Carl, what are some of the other factors worthy of consideration, factors that you discuss in the book that we really need to be paying attention to? Well, some of the other factors are the time and in terms of season. Uh, they could choose to launch their attack when we are either in late fall and crops have been harvested but not distributed. And that would add starvation to the effects of the bomb. Uh, they could launch in spring where our food supplies have been depleted by the previous wa weather, uh, the previous winter, and we have not yet planted and plowed for the coming year. So that is one factor that could be exploited very easily. You also in the book talk about China's 4 one policy of balancing their, their population. Uh, talk about that and the impact that could have on us. Well, if you look at a map of China, you will find that there are great areas of China that are not agriculturally productive. Uh, you're probably aware that they often have sandstorms in Peking where they require people to wear surgical masks at noon. So and another factor is I don't believe China's official figures on population. I believe they are much larger. Instead of the 1.3 or 1.4 billion, I believe they're probably closer to 1.7 or 1.8 billion. A nation has the primary purpose to feed and protect its people. So China will need agricultural land to feed this population in order to prevent their own riots. Nothing scares the communists more than an overthrow of their power. And let's talk about China today. We tend to think of China as maybe lagging behind us, but the more I read, the more I find out that they've been actually taking uh, intellectual property knowledge gained by, by the U.S. and using it. They're, they're a viable world power, and one we should be, should be concerned about, aren't they? Yes, China has a tremendous program to steal our intellectual property yes. at every opportunity. Uh, they are looking at economic and military and political opportunity. They have massive 
oh, cadres of computer experts looking at every possible contingency where they can steal whatever thing that might be useful to them. Carl Berryman with us on the program talking about 2025. This is a, uh, a novel of World War III as it pertains to the U.S. today and in the near future. As I'm looking at this, I'm wondering about the U.S. mentality, and you've touched on that a little bit during the, the course of the program. A, a couple of minutes left in the interview. Talk about our mindset as a nation today. We don't have a draft, the universal draft. We, we don't have any more. We have wars going on that we have U.S. servicemen fighting around the world that sort of becomes back page news after a while because it's not having an economic impact on us. Do we have the right mindset to get back into this warrior mentality that, you, that you've talked about? We would be hard-pressed. The next war, in my opinion, will not be so much fought by the riflemen or the infantrymen in a ditch, but it will be a, an electronic war. A, uh, a war of drones, a war of missiles. Uh, we need to have a larger impact in terms of education for engineers. Uh, I just recently read some of the college uh, studies or major in uh, gender studies. My God, why not? Uh, yes, dear. Uh, what are we doing with that? Or underwater basket weaving? We need engineers, scientists, and physicists, hey, people in mathematics. Uh, I don't see us doing that. Uh, I think Russia and China both have surpassed us in the education process for this. Uh, the economic power that such education produces uh, leads us to um, a much better position in the world. Uh, uh, the electronic world, the world of nuclear power, I recently read they're down to where they can now control on a microchip one electron, which is amazing. Yes. Uh, and China is educating their people far, in my opinion, far ahead of us. We need to get our act together. The book is 2025. Been a fascinating conversation with the author Carl Berryman. His other book still available, World War III and Divided We Fall. You'll find all of the books available at Amazon, all the, the usual places where books are sold, and you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. A book, as I mentioned, that's a, uh, it, it's a thriller. It's a story that you'll go through, and it will capture your attention. You won't want to put it down. I guarantee you at night you will not stop uh, reading the book. You'll try to get through another chapter before you have to uh, sign off for the night. But at the same time, you'll be thinking about, is this possible? And we'll find, as you found in the interview today, a lot of this is, is certainly possible, feasible, and happening now. So it's a, uh, uh, just a, an excellent read. Carl, are you working on anything else? now another book yes i have just started uh, i have about 20 pages written of a uh, sequel uh, the situation is situated here in wyoming where it is the survival of the primary characters in 2025 and what it will be like in a post-apocalyptic world well i am looking forward to that you will enjoy reading 2025, it's a chilling story that will capture your attention. The follow-up that Carl is, is working on, we will stay in touch and have Carl back on the program to talk about that. 2025, a book of survival of a military family located in Wyoming, the surprise attack that will leave little or no time for preparation. Book available wherever books are sold. Carl, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Look forward to having you back on the program to talk about the sequel. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Our guest, Carl Berryman. The book is 2025, available at Amazon. Check it out on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Direct link to Carl's Amazon site to get information on the book. This is This Week in America, and we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. 
For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.